What do you think of World Rugby's law changes and suggested law changes that they say are going to make the game better? In some cases I would go with them, in others absolutely not. There's lots to talk about on this one. I'm Tim, this is Egg Chasers, so let's get into it. And I'll tell you what, I'll get into it by taking you to a parallel universe where in a World Cup semi-final, there's 73 minutes on the clock, England are in possession, Freddie Stewart puts up a high kick. He goes to regather it himself, but he knocks it on, meaning South Africa have won themselves a scrum. Inside England's half, a massive territorial moment for them. They're two points behind. They know a penalty means they could kick to go in front and probably win the game. They have Ox and Che, they have Bongi and Banambi and Vincent Cock in their front row, whereas England, who have been getting marmalised by this opposition at this moment, have Ellis Genge, Kyle Sinclair and Jamie George. This is South Africa's moment. What happens? They set up for the scrum. And then England deliberately close the gap, get given a free kick against them, and because of the new law changes for World Rugby, South Africa cannot call another scrum. The game ends, England win, and they're into a World Cup final. That's the parallel universe we're in. Had the laws that world rugby want to put in been in place last year although that said if the laws that world rugby uh want to put in place or are thinking of putting in place were around last year south africa probably wouldn't have made it to the semi-final because remember that moment with damian velemza calling the mark from inside his own 22 he would have called the mark but he could not have called the scrum because world rugby would not allow it so france because that was such a a momentum shifting moment with the scrum, the penalty, the territory, the line out, and then ultimately the victory, South Africa probably wouldn't have got through against France. What is going on here? By the way, speaking of France, that's where I've been. And that is why there hasn't been so much content on the channel for a few days. And I apologize for that. Uh, I've been away. I've been um, here. I've been here. I've been here. And I've been there, Toulouse's dressing room. Yes, it was a rugby trip. It wasn't a holiday. It was a rugby trip, secret rugby trip. And I will be able to spill the beans on what's been going on there very soon. And I'm very excited to do so. But it does mean I've had my hands full. And then I got back home and, I was, um, and we got burgled. So I've been um, trying to piece everything back together there. So I appreciate your patience with me on the channel. Looking forward to the videos coming thick and fast. So I would love it if you'd give the video a thumbs up. Hit subscribe and leave your comments down below, specifically on what you think about this suggested law change from World Rugby. Now, I made a video uh, a little while ago. Um, this is the law change, by the way, that World Rugby is suggesting. Removal of the scrum option from a free kick at scrum time, reducing dead time. They say, the bit that bothers me is reducing dead time. I don't like that. That suggests that World Rugby regards scrums as dead time. The bit around scrums, where teams take ages to get themselves set, that's dead time. Sort that out, absolutely. The scrum itself is absolutely essential. Now, I made a video a little while ago at the start of the year. It's one of my most viewed ever videos, so I'm going to put it in the description. I'm going to pin it to the comments so you can go and check it out. But I covered a lot of this because what seems to have happened is the suggestions that Warren Gatlin made at the start of the year are very close in nature to what World Rugby are now suggesting they want to happen in terms of the laws. And when Warren Gatlin came out with his suggestions, I did point out that it looked to me like a lot of the laws would um, disproportionately affect South Africa. They looked to me, we definitely had a, a bit of a whiff of South Africa have won back-to-back -back World Cups. These are the things they're really good at. Let's try and negate those a little bit. Again, World Rugby are saying it reduces dead time. Scrums, are amazing they're absolutely essential i'll leave you to decide and, and by as i say go and have a look at that video i'll leave you to decide what you think about the motive behind the rule changes uh but i will st I, I, what i will say is I, I i don't like this one it 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 paints a bad picture on scrums and scrums are amazing no one at the world cup during that france south africa game during that england south africa game during ireland new zealand nobody was complaining about scrums they were incredible drama i will say when props get up from a from a scrum that needs to be reset and they start taking mud off the bottom of their boots and second rows stand up uh, get themselves sorted and then go back down again to reset and it all takes a minute and a half that is ridiculous and we can sort that out tomorrow but Putting this negative light on scrums, I don't like. Rugby talks about it being a game for all shapes and sizes, and I absolutely, fundamentally believe that's one of its strengths. I love that. 
um, whatever level of the game, my, my son's team, you know, there's, there's guys all shapes and sizes. They all have a place, all have a role. And rugby's amazing for that. Look at rugby league where everyone's like five foot ten blocks. Rugby's completely different. And it's so special because of it. And any negative attitude towards the scrum, any attempt to take scrummaging away is an attempt to take that element of the game, which I love and I think is fundamental away from it. So I, I don't like this one, I'm going to say. I don't like this one. Uh, but let's go through some of the other laws because it's not all about this one, although do get stuck in, in the comments on that, but there are others. I'll rattle through them, some of them. Now, some of these law changes are immediate and they are changing. Some of them are suggested and they're not necessarily changing. So, um, oh, sorry, wrong one. Uh, there we go. The next law change that um, World Rugby have on their radar is all about that uh, that dreaded uh, caterpillar ruck and speeding that up. Hallelujah. One negative, one big positive. This one is changing immediately. And basically, what World Rugby have said is referees need to call use it as soon as the ball is available and they need to enforce the five second rule. This is not a new law. This is enforcing the law which is already on the books which referees, I think, have got a bit of slack at doing. And I've talked about this, and in fact, in that video that I've already mentioned, that is pinned, that is in the description, I talk about exactly this, and I use some video examples of just how easily this element of the game could be solved. Some people would like it to go further and have the Caterpillar Ruck banned, but honestly, I don't know how you do that. I don't know how you enforce it. That just seems far too complicated. And what they've said about, cool, use it early, and make sure it's only five seconds, it should be job done. The next law concerns water carriers. This is another one which is changing immediately and it means uh, that, again, that what water carriers can and can't do and who water carriers can and can't be has just been reiterated by World Rugby and the, those laws will be enforced. We had the ridiculous situation last week in the Wales v Italy game in the Six Nations where Neil Jenkins came on the pitch as the water carrier and started giving the referee his opinion on one of his decisions. Bang out of order. No place for it. I would actually go further on this one. I don't think any... Right, this may be a... Tell me what you think. This may be me going overboard. But I don't see why the water carriers need to have anything to do with the team. They can be like ball boys, as far as I'm concerned. Here's two suggestions. One, you have the water taken on. When the referee calls time off, the water carriers take the, ball, uh, the waters on and off like ball carriers, independent from the teams. So you stop this whole getting messages on and off the field. And secondly, an alternative to that would be each team just has little water stations around the pitch and the players can just go and get their own water when the time's off. No brainer, right? Watch, watch this space. World Rugby will end up doing that law and you heard it here first. Um, anyway, on to the next one. Tell me what you think as, as with all of them. The next one relates to uh, kicks in open play and what's been termed DuPont's law, where we saw that ridiculous situation in the Scotland game where Finn Russell just tucked the ball under his arm uh, on his hip and just stood still because France, all their players were offside and they were waiting for Finn Russell to move five metres, at which point the ones loitering up the field would have been all onside again. This seems sensible. This is one that's hopefully going to come in in May and um, I'm sure it will. And probably what will happen is they reiterate a law uh, that the law should be that you are only onside, if you're ahead of the ball being kicked, that is, you're only onside when, when the kicker or a player that was behind the kicker moved past you. That would seem sensible. That would encourage attack in play. That may mean people think twice about those, those long kick tennis uh, exchanges. Although I will also say, as well as scrums, I think kicks get a bad rap. Kicks and scrums are essential to rugby. And anyone says that they want less of them in the game um, or, or that they want them out of the game completely, I should say, um, no, no. Kicks are brilliant. Kicks are amazing. Kicks open up space for so much great attacking play. It's a really important element of the match. Uh, the next one concerns uh, croc rolls, and I'm 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 all for this one as well. This is one of the ones that could come in in May. Just, um, I mean, I, I've got this picture here. This is Jack Willis. Uh, he suffered a uh, ruptured um, ACL in his knee because of a crop roll in the Six Nations a couple of years ago against Italy. There's no place for it. I'm glad to say that it doesn't really happen much anymore. The players seem to have just stopped doing it themselves. But fine, put, put a rule in the books that says you can't do it. And the sanction, if you do do it, should be a really high one, as far as I'm concerned. The next one concerns the shot clock. We saw Rowan Farrell get caught by it in the game against Samoa in the World Cup. 
but uh, World Rugby want to re- uh, thinking about reducing the time that kickers get. I'm all for that. In the NFL, kickers have what 40 seconds for uh, from the end of a play to kick a conversion or the extra point or a field goal. I I think that would be reasonable. It, what what I don't like in rugby is when you have 90 seconds on the shot clock and the player doesn't need 90 seconds but waits and uses 90 seconds just to chew the clock up. That that seems crazy, but World Rugby are thinking about using it for scrums and lineouts as well. I'm not sure about that. Do you need do you want a shot clock for a scrum or for a lineout? No, just let's just put the power in the referee's hands there and he can say, right, hurry up, or you're gonna get free kicked or penal or penalised if you do it repeatedly. It'll soon stop. Especially if you allow still free kicks to mean a scrum and um good scrummaging teams have that threat up their sleeve, then it'll soon stop. Uh, the next one is all about uh, marks from a kickoff. Um, what, what do you make of this one? Tell me in the comments down below. The ability to mark the ball inside the 22 from a restart. They say it's promoting attacking options, but it seems to me like all that's going to happen is a player will call a mark, then kick to touch, and you have a line out and the game slows down. What are they thinking? That all the kickoffs will suddenly go short, not long. I'll tell you what I think is going on here. I think World Rugby are trying to stop collisions. Because um, from kickoffs that go long, quite often you have the chasing players and the catching player wallop. Uh, which, as long as the tackle is legal, I'm all for. I want, and I'm not ashamed or afraid to say this, some people are, I'm not. I, if, if it's legal, I want massive collisions in rugby. That's why I play the game, the risk, or played mainly, play every now and again. That's why I watch it. The The... The physical confrontation is part of it. The, uh, a, a friend of mine, uh, as he says, the risk is the reward. So I'm not sure about this. I don't, don't know what World Rugby are getting at with that one. The next law is the, uh, concerning a mall. And the suggestion is that uh, instead of saying you have two opportunities to, you, to, to maul it, you only have one. So when the referee says it's stopped, you must use it now. I'm okay with this one being trialled. There are other areas of the mall that I think need to be tidied up. Teams get away with collapsing malls far too easily and then just lying on top of the ball. And uh, referees seem to give that, make that lenient. Again, much like a scrum, I think a mall's a, a special thing and should be preserved. So I'm, I'm happy for this one being trialled. Let's see how it goes. And this one, I don't get this one either. Um, sorry. Uh, I don't get this one. The, um, the scrum halves need more protection. Do they? Do they really? How many times have you seen nines getting caught at the back of a ruck or a mall or a scrum? Hardly ever happens. I quite like the... It's like, I want the contest at the scrum. I would like the ball to be put in straight. Or, if you insist on it being chucked straight into the second row, then get rid of the, the, the rule in the book that says the, scrum, uh, the, the ball has to be put in straight. I like the contest at the scrum. And I like the contest between the two scrum halves. If one of them can can get in amongst it quite like it um i don't know I, I, this is only a suggestion for a trial so i'm I, I guess i'm okay with that let's see let's see exactly what they mean when they say this and um put some flesh on the bones and finally and i will i will finish with another positive and say f- hallelujah finally world rugby doing something which literally thousands of Tens of thousands of people have been saying themselves for literally years, and I use literally, literally. I've had this conversation so many times, even going to watch my son's team. And how many times have you watched a match and thought, why are you calling that line out not straight? The opposition didn't even compete. So the defending team haven't lost any advantage and the attacking team haven't gained any advantage. Finally, we're not going to have those pedantic moments where a team uncontested catch a ball and a referee says, oh, it wasn't quite 100% straight, so scrum down. Finally, just common sense. So, um, yeah, uh, I, I will say well done, World Rugby, on that. Equally, I'll say probably should have sorted that out a little bit sooner, let's be honest. So those are the main ones uh, for the time being. There's, there's, there's more as well on the, the tackle height at the elite level. That's probably something I'll cover in another video because that's just building on what's been done at the amateur level in France and um, New Zealand and certainly in the UK. So um, I'll get into that another time. But just going back to the, the, the first one, that depowering of the scrum. How do you see that? 
do you see that as potentially changing the the fundamental essence of what rugby is or am I going overboard on it happy to be happy to be told that um in fact I'll be down there with you in the comments down below um this is one of those that, that could throw up some interesting discussions so I want to see what you've got to say get involved down below give the video a thumbs up it helps me spread the word apologies again it's been a while since my last video but my house is now back together after a burglary I'm back from France and I'll be able to tell you all about that soon I'm, I'm very excited for you to see what's been going on there uh, please hit subscribe on the channel. I will see you on the next one.